at uh, 936. So we welcome back our co-host, the Admiral Bill, two stars, double field. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Good morning. And Maria, all-star Lawrence. <laughs> Good morning. Good to see you. And via telephone, the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Governor Justice, good morning to you, sir. How are you feeling today? Hey, apologies, Rob. This is CJ. The governor is just finishing up something. We will get him ASAP. Apologies. Uh, we're going to ask you the same questions we'll ask him. There we go. See what you can do with these responses. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm the guy that you need to ask all the good questions to. We'll, we'll make sure the man with the plan and the answer actually can answer them here. Just give us a few more minutes. We'll get him patched. Yeah, where, where are you guys, by the way? What location? We, Yeah, we are traveling to southern West Virginia today. We are uh, heading to Bluestone State Park. The governor has an announcement. Uh, actually, we're kind of breaking some news here, I guess, for southern West Virginia. But the governor is going to announce today a new law enforcement dive team specially trained dive team to help uh, on rescue missions and and um just water investigations it's a pretty cool story cool. Uh, but more on that later today yeah where where is bluestone state park i've never been there yeah it's uh just outside of hinton west virginia okay so yeah just outside of beckley head down 64 hinton exit Pitch a right to bluestone state park and you get there all right i'm sure i've passed it i've cut across the state on 64 in the past, so. Yeah. Yeah. Been so, done. Rob, give us just a few minutes and we'll yeah, get man. the governor here. All right. You go, you. You, you go do what you got to do. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll talk amongst ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This good. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. I bet he wasn't expecting you to get interviewed today. <laughs> that's, that's not as bad as yesterday when we had uh, two people on from the Martinsburg Housing Authority who I had no idea were coming on to the show. <laughs> it happens. You know, right? we, I had uh, been working through a fellow there and I thought he was coming in. And uh, I wasn't getting a response as to what was going on that particular morning. And uh, it could have been that he sent me an email back and I, I just didn't see it. But uh, we're doing the show and all of a sudden two women walk in. I'm like, hey, <laughs> who are you guys? <laughs> yeah. But you we, hit we your them. surprise very well. Not. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I, I, think, I think when you go, hey, who are you? That's a pretty good indication that you're surprised by the presence of somebody. And the, the yeah, knocked on the door and everybody said, you who's knocking on the door? So. All right, very good. There's playing in the road right here in my driveway. In the road. Okay. Governor Justice, can you hear us? I got you loud and clear. Excellent. Well, this is Rob and with me, uh, Bill Stubblefield and Maria Lawrenson as well. Thank you for joining us. I understand you're on your way to Bluestone State Park today. I am. <laughs> and I am. I guess, you know, we're going to celebrate, uh, you know, the DNR's dive team and uh, the great work that they do and, and you know, pass out a few little warnings to people to be really careful on the fourth. Well, that makes sense, too. I think we all need to make sure we heed that warning as well. Be very careful on the fourth so we can see you again on the fifth. Let's uh, talk about the state income tax cut. The triggers, I understand, have been met. We just had a leader, a householder, uh, on the program uh, just a moment ago. So your challenge, then, is you've asked the members of the Senate and the House to come up with another 5% to get it to a 10% tax cut. Tell me why this is important to you. Well, it won't quite be 10, because I don't know if we'll either be at 3 or we'll be at 4 on the first part. But uh, but if we can go to with another 5 you know, what we need to do is so simple is we need to accelerate this as fast as we possibly can and let it drag along like a turtle, you know, just because we're afraid of the dark isn't going to cut it because this is our people's money. And I have absolutely, you know, any, nobody can deny that I've kept almost a flat budget, you know, and really and true, the economics of this state are second to none. And we're just cooking like crazy, and we need to put more people money back into people's pocket. And when we do that, they'll spend it here, and that's good for the state. But not only that, it will signal over and over to drive more people to West Virginia. That's really great for West Virginia. And the single biggest thing, hands down, no matter what anybody would ever say, is if we can get rid of our personal income tax in West Virginia, it will be the biggest economic driver tenfold to anything else we could ever do you mentioned maybe not 10 percent. so if the trigger is three or four percent you had five of that so you're thinking more like eight or nine percent that's correct that's correct and when do you find out specifically whether that number is three or four percent 
I think, you know, that that's, that's that'll come out of our revenue department and everything. I think you're probably looking at uh, three weeks before we really know. About three weeks. All right. Bill? Yeah, good morning, Governor. Uh, as, morning. Rob, as Rob mentioned, we had Eric Household on, and we were talking about this, uh, the tax cut. He suggested that you perhaps were talking about an income tax reserve fund, yet what I read, the press release, it's a direct tax cut. Uh which are you proposing, the reserve fund or the actual tax cut? No, it's uh, <clears throat> there's a little communication lapse here because, uh, you know, Eric Household and our friends, uh, he's a business guy, he's a sharp guy, he's done a lot of great stuff for West Virginia. But, uh, <clears throat> but all that being said, we, we established basically an insurance policy. We put $400 million dollars in basically a rainy day personal income tax reserve. There's $400 million plus the interest that, you know, that, that it accrues all the time, you know, that's in that fund right now today. And what I said in, you know, on my announcement the other day at the cultural center was here's what we could do as far as the additional 5%. The additional 5% cost us about Pick a number, $30 million. It's not quite that, but $30 million per percent. You know, so 5% is going to cost us roughly about $140 million total. So if you took $140 million out of the surplus that we have now, the $826 million, well, good gosh, mighty, we, we wouldn't even know it, and put it into reserve fund. In fact, we could double it. And put two hundred and eighty million over in the reserve fund. Now the reserve fund would be all, or would be at seven hundred million dollars. And honestly, it would be the greatest insurance policy forevermore, forevermore. You know, from the standpoint that would allow us to cut taxes another five percent. And if we had a little bump in the road, pull a little bit out of your insurance policy, out of your reserve fund. And that's what, you know, uh, <clears throat> Eric Householder and I have been talking about. Excuse me, I'm a little confused now. Are you talking about doing both, adding an additional $250 million to the reserve fund and the uh, the 5% tax cut, or are you doing one or the other? No, no, I would do both. I would do both for sure because you've got $826 million of surplus money. Well, if you took... 270 and you put that over into the reserve fund you know and that put the reserve fund right at 700 million dollars you'd still have you'd still have 575 million dollars of surplus money to come up with whatever projects you wanted to come up with if the legislature wanted to do that you know but but absolutely I would move two hundred and seventy million over into the reserve fund and then let us discuss what we're gonna do with the other five hundred and seventy five million dollars of surplus. You see guys, here's the whole thing. You know, we've got needs. We've got needs like child care. For crying out loud, we've got to have young people in the state of West Virginia. Why we did not pass the child care tax credit, who on God's earth knows? You know, it was $4.2 million. Needs done. I'll put it on the call. Needs done for absolute sure. But in addition to that, because what does that do? It drives young families to West Virginia. we got to have young people because we got to have workers. So, <clears throat> so that's one thing. The other thing is we've got needs like, you know, foster care, for crying out loud, you know, corrections. We've got hungry folks. We've got seniors. we got needs. You know, well, you're never, ever going to be able to help the people in need if we don't have the economics right and the economic engine running properly in West Virginia, and that's exactly what I've done. I mean, we can say what we want, but it's hard to argue. We have produced $4 billion of surpluses in the last three years in West Virginia. 
And what have we done with those? We've done the right thing. We've not frivolously thrown them away. We've kept a flat budget for all practical purposes, and absolutely we've done the right things. We cut taxes, put money back in our people's pockets. We have uh, biggest tax cut in state history. We're putting more money into our roads and on and on and on. So, so uh, we're doing the right things. We're not, we're, you know, I'm not going, you know, I'm going to work till the day I walk out the door and, you know, and, and I will promise you that uh, I'm a business guy. I know what I'm doing. So, Governor, let me ask you this. How confident are you that the legislature is going along with you on this measure, all of it, some of it? Um, obviously, we know that sometimes um, different branches of government can butt heads. Um, but how confident are you with this particular measure? Well, you know, first and foremost, I really want it done. You know, secondly, at the end of the day, if they don't do it, shame on them. You know, you know, the one thing that I have done for absolute certain is I've taught them who's really important, and it's not them, it's not me. I've told, I've taught them who was really important, and that's the voters. That's Toby and Edith out there. Those are the people that are important, you know, and what, what we should be is what we ought to be as servants. You know, this idea of, of piling up a bunch of money, waiting on justice to leave so we can do a bunch of pet projects, we ought to all be concerned about that. But I really think they'll do the right thing. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, we're looking at elections and everything else, and I think the voters – the voters have got to really pay real attention to this because I'm trying to put money back in their pockets. I'm, at, you know, from my Senate race standpoint, from crying out loud, we all know. I mean, I'm winning our Senate race going away. From the standpoint of doing something politically for the Senate race, it doesn't matter. I mean, it just plain doesn't matter. Let's just be honest. You know, so at the end of the day, what am I doing it for? I'm doing it for Toby Needs because they deserve it. They uh -huh. deserve it. How do you counter the argument that Eric Tarr has uh, has implied that you're hamstringing your successor? Listen, just go back in time. I mean, the, the sad part about this is, uh, you know, the real sad part is people have listened to a physical therapist that thinks he's the, he's the accountant guru of the world. You know, I mean... I can pro positively promise you how he's tried to scare people about the, the callback that was coming on education, the $350 million are going to be called back from the federal government. We can't do this. We can't do that and everything else. How can he argue with all the things he scare us to death about what has come to pass? What has come to pass? You know, really and truly, you know, this guy should have been removed from his position as the finance chair way back when. And to be perfectly honest, you know, if President Blair would have moved in that direction, we'd probably still have pre a pre President Blair, too. So with all that being said, I just, I just think if we want to let Eric Tarr run the state of West Virginia, I'm not going to be your governor. And, and, and really and truly, if we want to sit back and listen to Eric Tarr, you're listening to the wrong guy. That's all I can say. Where did the issues between you and Senator Tarr begin, Governor Justice? And have the two of you ever met one-on-one -on -one and tried to iron these differences out? Listen, we've met one-on-one -on -one a bunch of times, you know, and, uh, and, <clears throat> and I think if we're really fair, I mean, really, really, really fair, you know, uh, all you'd have to do is go back and look where all the attacks began. All the attacks began with Eric Tarr. That's what he does with all kinds of people. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I, I just think we have put way too much confidence in a, in a man that, uh, and I don't understand it. I, I really don't understand it. You know, but, uh, you know, it, but, but it is what it is. I'm, all I'm trying to do is tell you what we ought to do in the next six months and when I'm gone, if I'm gone and everybody wants to go another way and everybody wants to turn their back on the people again and, 
And, you know, for crying out loud, just think about this. What if what would have happened if we'd have passed Amendment 2? Eric Tarr was the author of Amendment 2. What would have happened? You know, honestly, the counties, the counties would have been lined up down in Charleston begging for money, absolutely for their services in every way. It would have been the biggest debacle of all time. How in the world do we think that Charleston knows best for everybody? That's what Eric Tarr wanted to do. I mean, you know, let's just be fair. That's all I ask you to be is just be fair. And if you want to go down that road, look, I'm not going to be here, you know, but I can tell you that's the wrong road to go down. A state employee has texted me and said, ask the governor, will the governor be giving state employees Friday off? <laughs> well, I haven't, I haven't, uh, that's not really been brought right to, to my desk yet and everything, but, uh, you know, what I've done in the past is when we've had a situation just like what you've got, you know, Thursday's a holiday and then, and then Friday, you know, and then you've got the weekend, I think absolutely our state employees work really hard. I'm going to do it. Oh, <laughs> oh, breaking news on WRNR. Way to go, Governor. But nevertheless, I mean, Really and truly, we're not going to get anything done on Friday, and things are going good, and I'm proud of our state employees. I'm crying out loud, I, I'm taking it. All right, right. That was your cell phone's kind of breaking up <laughs> in and out, but we got that part clear, that's for sure. <laughs> Governor, we've been talking about the state's finances. Uh, you, your own personal finance has received some visibility, some publicity recently, and I think the last few days another creditor is in the process of suing you. Uh, what is your response to these? You've got to talk just a little bit louder because I can't hear you. Okay. Bob, you want to... Yeah, Bill's, Bill's question had to do with the latest story that's on the Metro News website about another business uh, coming after your corporations, which I understand are run by your children, for money. Uh, judges ordered the sale of one of those companies uh, to pay some creditors. Uh, what's going on there? Well, to be perfectly honest, I don't, I don't really know, but I can tell you this: that uh, the biggest thing that we should have reported and should be all over reporting is we thought, oh God, the sky's falling with Carter Bank, and you know we owe three hundred million dollars to Carter Bank. The sky's falling, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. I told everybody, context a little, just, just let our, our family handle their own businesses, and 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 what happened? Everything got worked out. Everything's good. Everything's just moving right along. I mean, you know, look, you know, sure, we we just like anybody, you know, we have bumps in the road and everything else, but uh, but we employ thousands and thousands of people. I think, my, you know, son and daughter do a great job. You know, uh, I try to keep my focus right on the government, and that's what I've done from day one. I mean, really, if people want to feel bad about something, I can tell you something to feel bad about, and it's just this, is if I'd have just never become your governor, and all I would have done is sit back and run our businesses, probably you'd have had a whole lot less situations with our businesses. You see, I didn't do that. I did exactly what our forefathers did. I was willing to cause real harm or whatever happened with our businesses where they did. It just happened. When I stepped up and I said, I'm going to be your governor, I did exactly one thing, sir, and I delivered, too. And so at the, at the end of the day, I would say, get out of their businesses. My God, I'm living. You know, they have proved over and over and over that they always deliver, and that's exactly what they'll do this time, too. Governor, we are just about out of time. Final word is yours, sir. No, I just think uh, West Virginia is – made us all proud and i really 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 appreciate the folks that uh all the people we pulled the rope together and uh look you you don't know what an honor it's been for me to be your governor and uh i love the people i love the people with all my soul i really just felt like that west virginia continued to get the short end of the stick and it wasn't right we were so good, it was unbelievable. 
you guys up in the Eastern Panhandle, what an unbelievable job you do. And we needed to really pay attention to you because you had the right playbook. You know, there's a lot of areas of our state that were really, really hurting, and there's still a lot of folks in the, that are really hurting that we need to help. But, uh, but we're on the right path. Crying out loud, I'd say, you know, when I'm long gone, keep it going. Keep it going, West Virginia. You're just the best of the best. I mean, what a state, what a people's. Couldn't be better in my book. And so God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Governor, thank you. Appreciate you making us a part of your uh, routine here today. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Governor Jim Justice, as we take our uh, final break here of the program. <laughs> 